Hi. Welcome back viewers. I am Eric the Car Guy and this is part two of the rear disc brake conversion on my GMT 400 pickup truck, also known as Dad's truck. GMT 400 trucks ran from 1988 to 1998, so if you have a Chevrolet or GMC truck of that vintage and are looking to upgrade to rear disc brakes, this is your video. Now I'll put a link in the description to part one to make that easy for you to find in case you missed it, but there are also a couple of things we need to go over before we get started. Item one on that list is this video does not contain a test drive of all this work once it's done, and I apologize for that. The reason it worked out that way is because not only did I do the rear disc brake upgrade back here, but I also lowered the rear suspension, replaced the differential, replaced the gears back here. A lot of things happened back here, and then I went out for a test drive. So that test drive covers more than just the brakes. What I've done with that is I've compiled that and a few other notes and things into a separate video, which I will link down in the description when it becomes available. So I apologize for not including that. However, I hope item two will help make up for this because in this video, I show you how to delete the ABS on these trucks. Now, whether or not that's a good idea, well, I'm gonna say it's, it's hard to say, but I do show you how to do it in case you want to do that to your truck. Anyway, I'm done talking. Let's uh, get back to the action for part two of the rear disc brake conversion on the GMT 400, otherwise known as Dad's truck. Take it away, Eric. Now that we've mounted and uh, plumbed up the rear calipers, the next step uh, is to replace the master cylinder in this kit. There's a special master cylinder. I showed you part numbers and everything earlier. In addition to that, uh, this is the ABS or isolation dump valve, and this is the computer that goes to it. We're also going to have to perform some modifications to the proportioning valve, which is here. My thought is, I've never liked the brake pedal feel in this truck ever, and I'm not the only one who feels this way, and a lot of people I'm sure are watching this video very closely. I'm going to eliminate this. It requires moving one brake line from down here over to the bottom of the proportioning valve. In addition to replacing the master cylinder, I hope this gives me the firm brakes I'm looking for in this truck. So this is the bottom of the proportioning valve here, and this is the isolation dump valve. This is the brake line coming out of the proportioning valve that you can see loops around and goes over to here on the dump valve. In essence, what I'm trying to do here, you see this line that goes over and just goes from the proportion valve to the dump valve and then out of the dump valve. I wanna take this one that's in the dump valve and replace this one that goes over to the dump valve. So I'm just gonna move this brake line over to here. This bracket holds the master cylinder on and everything. I'm gonna loosen everything before I loosen the master cylinder. That way I can get some purchase on these fasteners. These are 13 millimeter on top of the quote unquote dump valve or they're probably half inch. This 13's fitting kind of loose. Really hope by the time I'm done with all this, I got the firm brake pedal that I'm hoping for. And we will circle back to the parking brake cables. I just want to make sure the, the hydraulics work before we go there. This will bleed out onto your paint. So if you've got pretty painted surfaces, uh, make sure you protect them before you allow brake fluid to get onto them. It looks to me like these are both different. So there will probably have to be some horse trading going on with the fittings to uh, do this ABS delete the way I want to. This is the connector that I just broke that uh, I believe needs to be disconnected. There we are. The lower one connects to that dump valve. I'm gonna take this valve off just to see what I'm up against here. I think this computer will just slide forward, maybe. A little plastic tab that will likely break on me. So far it's deleted, but we're not done yet. This is the one that formerly connected up to the proportioning valve, and this is the one that connected up to the dump valve. You can see that these fittings are different size, so I won't be able to just screw this in underneath here. So I'm gonna have to swap this fitting onto this line. Fortunately, this brake line doesn't go far. It just goes down under the frame rail down there, and I can pull it off. I can cut the end off and then uh, swap the uh, other threaded fitting onto it and hopefully be able to screw directly into the proportion valve. Darn it. Well, I'll just put it back like this when I'm done. I'm sure it'll be the O2 sensor. Just literally snapped right off. I guess I'll just have to replace the engine or rebuild it. To get the fitting I want, it's going to require a little bit of 
this. Yeah, that should do it. This brake line is larger than the other brake line we're using, which was the 3 16 This stuff is gonna be quarter, I believe. So we'll just be using a different die. Our fitting. There's not quite enough of this to get into the die to be effective, so I gotta straighten it out a little bit. Now I just went and cleaned up the end of this with my uh, crocus cloth, mechanics, and sandpaper, whatever. It's super important, especially on these harder, thicker lines, to make sure you don't have any burrs on the ends of these when you do this. Uh, so I was trying to make double sure of that. A new fitting is born. Now my plan. I've got it sort of loosely hooked into the bottom is to go from here to here. I want to mark this again. I had another mark that I didn't like as much. Might bend it from there up. It's never going to fit into my tubing bender. I'm just going to have to very carefully do this. I don't want to kink it too much in there, which it started to do. That's why I put it in the vise like this, right on that bend, so that it could no longer kink it, well, as badly. Let's see what that does. That's not touching anything, so and my kink didn't get too bad. I'm gonna tighten that top one. ABS deleted. I'm curious to know if this delete actually makes the brakes better on this truck. But the fact that I've already switched to rear disc and I'm about to change the master cylinder and proportioning valve means that any testing I would do in that regard would not yield any plausible results. So I don't know, if you remove this, uh, you may possibly end up with a uh, better brake pedal. Hard to say. It's now time to gut the metering block. Um, I believe we have this type on this uh, truck. So there's a nut on the back of it as it sits in the bracket. You need to remove that nut. Along with it will come a valve, a spring, and a seal. We'll take the seal off of the valve. We'll leave the spring and the seal out and we'll put everything back in because we're now gonna be uh, adjusting the proportioning to the rear brakes via the master cylinder. There's a special valve uh, right here on the side of it that's gonna take over that. I'm gonna take the opportunity to just undo this brake switch. If I guessed right, it's a three-quarter. If I guessed right. Why couldn't they make it easy and put the valve on the front side? So it is under spring tension. There it is. I found the spring and here's the valve and this helps divvy up the uh, brake fluid pressure front and rear. It says disregard this seal and disregard that spring. It will go back in like that. And now at long last, I'm gonna get the master cylinder ready to replace. I'm gonna go over and get the new one and bench bleed it once I get all the stuff loose so that it goes together quickly. Now I'm gonna install the master cylinder, but what's gonna happen is these lines are gonna to need to be switched. So the one that's in the front is gonna to need to go to the back. The back one's gonna to need to go to the front. To do that, I think what might be helpful is to loosen these lines so there's a little more play 
By the way, yeah, I'm breaking this loose without the tube side, but look how wide that wrench is. It's very good at this. These are also loose. I want to minimize the amount of time and brake fluid leakage that's allowed here. And those are 15 millimeter nuts that hold it to the booster. So this is the supplied uh, master cylinder bench bleeding kit thing. I've installed some fittings on the outside. I'm about to install these hoses. And this might help prevent some mess, but I'm gonna have this trash can under here just in case. The idea being is as you bench bleed, the fluid will go right back into the master cylinder. I'm using dot three. Here I am hoping. <laughs> I'm going to have enough brake fluid because I only got one more in stock, one more bottle. I'm not going to fill it up anymore. And now we play brake booster and you just bench bleed it. This is pretty much what happens when you step on the brake pedal. It pushes this in, forces fluid through it. I haven't seen any bubbles in a while. So I'm gonna say, this thing is pretty much bled out. I'm not going to tighten these down all the way yet. I find it's easier to thread on brake lines if you've got a little bit of movement on the master cylinder. Now that it's on there though, I can figure out how to uh, move these around because this one's got to go in the back now and this one has got to go to the front. So this one doesn't look all that difficult, but this back one does. <laughs> I may have to tighten it down just to do my bending. So this looks like an easy one. I keep looking at this going, that was too easy. I'm looking at this going, I don't need to bend the heck out of this. In fact, what I've decided to do is I'm going to cut this down here or like right about there or so, and then install my fitting there. Then I'm going to come up here, cut this back and flare this up here when it gets closer. So I'm going to, I'm going to figure out the bottom first, and then I'm going to come back in and figure out this length and I'm going to try to make the minimal amount of bending between here and here in order to make this happen. If I'm to guess, I'm going to guess a little bit long. I'm going to cut it there. I like how the instructions say, you might have to slightly bend. Total bullshit. All right, so for me, I say I nailed that because once that's in there and flared and stuff, it's going to come right in line. But it looks like it's going to have to go back over this way just a little. So in other words, it's not going to be a straight as far as where I cut this guy. I'm going to cut a little long so it's down inside there. Might look a little weird, but it'll look a lot less weird than this guy looks. I know I could have done more there, but I didn't. I want to drive this. Oh, hello. This is the tedious stuff I usually cut out. Because, well, who wants to watch some fat guy stand there and cut the end off a brake line? Look at that. 
Yay! My original mark for cutting is way back there, but if I leave this bent the way it is and shove this all the way in, it's never going to reach the end. So I've decided to make another cut like right up there so that I have enough so that I can trim it and, and flare it the way I need to flare it. So it's going to be a little bit extra going in and this is why. Flare and cut and cut and flare stuff. Cut, cut and flare. Flare and cut. Cut and flare. Flare and cut. Cut, flare. Flare, cut. Cut flare bend. You see how little that moved? <laughs> That's how close I cut it. I love that workbench. Now to get it all connected without it bleeding out. This is all the brake fluid I got and we still got to bleed the wheels. Hopefully we get a test drive today. helpful at all. The hole bended a little. That's total BS. You completely got to redo it. A lot of things about this kit aren't quite what they seem. You might ask why I haven't reconnected the uh, brake light sensor to the top of the proportioning valve. Reason for that is simple. We've gutted the inside of the proportioning valve, so that's not gonna work properly anymore. At some point, I may go back and connect to this uh, fluid level sensor inside the new master cylinder, uh, but we'll just have to see how things work out when we get to that point. But for now, reconnecting this, eh, kind of meaningless. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. I'm gonna start at the right rear, go to the left front, go to the left rear and then the right front is how I'm gonna do it. Cameraman Brian's gonna jump inside the cab and pump the pedal while I bleed at the brakes. Have fun watching. Is that window down? Yep. Sweet. Okay, pump it up. Yeah, just long, even strokes. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> pump it. At no point should you let the master cylinder run dry. If you do, well, that's a bad day. Pump it. So when you're holding it, are you pushing it to the floor? No. You should. Okay. Pump it. You having fun, Brian? That was fun. All right, pump it. When I was bleeding the brakes, I was using this upper bleeder, not the lower bleeder that was normally on the caliper. It's the one we installed that you want to bleed the brakes from on top. Still good. All right, pump it. Is it starting to feel like a brake pedal at all? Well, I mean, does it stop as it's going halfway down the floor? Yeah. Okay, good. If it goes to the floor, then we're not making any progress, but if it doesn't go to the floor, then we are. We're making progress. Excellent. Ooh, excellent. I'm getting movement on the caliper. All right, hold it. Something is leaking. All right, pump it. Okay, stop. All right, pump it. I think I got it. All right, pump it. One of the lines was leaking at the master cylinder ever so slightly, which is going to sabotage our whole process here. We don't want that. How's the pedal feel? Pretty good. Does it? Pretty beefy. Does it? I don't Nice. Well, I'm going to go around and see if I see any air because we had some introduced up there. If we don't, we'll call it done because we're getting low on the master cylinder. No air at all there. Pump it. Oh, that's clean brake fluid. No bubbles. Uh, there's some air there. Pump it. Well, it hasn't run dry. Pump it. Uh, that's good looking brake fluid. Hold it. I'm getting clean, no air back here and up there. In theory, we should be done. Start it up and feel the pedal. It will, when, it will when you turn it on. You're relieved, Brian. The brakes are also gonna feel better once the wheels are on because with the wheels, not holding the rotors in place, the rotors can move around a bit, so it's gonna feel a lot firmer once the wheels are bolted on and the rotors are where they're supposed to be. With all this work complete and the hydraulics and everything connected and the brake split, the next thing to do is take it out on a test drive. Now on this test drive, you wanna bed the brakes in. I've done a video about this procedure that I'll link down in the description, but the basic principle is, is you wanna accelerate up to about 50 miles per hour and then decelerate down to 10 miles per hour. 
and you do this several times uh, to heat up the brakes. Once the brakes get nice and hot, then just drive around normally for a little bit and let things cool down, and by that time, the uh, brake pad should be bedded in nicely. Uh, once again, link in the description to a more detailed video about this procedure. Let's go drive it. I'll say right off, I don't love the brake pedal. I don't love it at all. In fact, I don't like it. It just goes down about halfway and feels squishy. There may be some more air in there. I'm not sure. I can't really pump it up. Let's go drive it. Oh yeah. When I get real power in this, it'll move. Probably should have really checked the brakes first. Oh, it's, it's stopping. Brakes feel better. They do feel better. But I can't help but wonder if they would have felt this good if I just deleted the ABS and not mess with all that rear disc stuff and just redid the rear brakes. I'm getting that. I'm trying to burn the brakes in a little bit. Got me a zip tie. I think it'll work. And it's black, so the UV rays underneath the truck won't be able to degrade it because there's a lot of UV rays under your truck. That's sarcasm. Now let's work on the parking brake. So I need to remove this cable from the old bracket. We're just getting around to that now. Maybe this trick will work. Maybe, maybe not. Uh-oh. Well, I suppose I gotta finish running this off the end here. I don't wanna break it and this is the only cable I have and considering I gotta reuse it, nah. It's, uh, may just be nature of the beast here. Yeah, I'm just bending stuff. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm glad I took this off the truck. I suppose if you're just installing this kit and not lowering the rear like I did, then you wouldn't have to go through all this. You just have to like reconnect everything. I don't know what's going on here, <clears throat> but they always submit with fire. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's like some kind of special effect. This is the best penetrating oil ever. Mm, toxic fumes. <laughs> well, almost made it. It just broke off. So why try and save this? Well, there may be enough threads left on that that I can actually use and adjust. And if there is, great. Um, I think I was heating the wrong place because there's another nut further up here and I think that's what was getting stuck. Either way, I was reluctant to cut this off, um, but I'm gonna cut it off now so I can just open this thing up and get inside. I can replace this with a hose clamp when I'm done, I think. Should've been heating up here. So I've sort of got things mocked up where they're going to go based on where they were in the past. And now I'm trying to sort out this. So if this is all the way at the end, oh, it needs just a little bit more because that goes into there. And then this cable is supposed to fit in the front of this. Just doesn't look like I have enough. 
because this guy is supposed to fit in the end up here. Here's a closer look at where that left side cable comes down into the right side cable. Uh, I know I didn't give you a good look at it before. I'm going to uh, connect this the other side first and then come over to this side. This side seems like in the end it'll be easier to connect. don't have enough adjustment because I broke the stupid nut because I didn't heat the right part. There comes a time when you have to admit defeat and I've been admitting defeat now. I've ordered a new cable. It'll be here in the morning. For you, it'll only be a few seconds, but me, I have to pine away the hours until it arrives tomorrow. Welcome back viewers. I have a brand new parking brake cable in my hands, which we are going to install right now. Now I didn't waste my time between, well, the few seconds ago when you saw me leave and you saw me come back, I painted the frame underneath where this parking brake goes. I figured, eh, why not? Let's get this thing in there. Ow. The new cable does not come with this sleeve that's on the old cable, so I'm gonna to have to transfer that over. But I also think, I don't like this double nut set up here. I'm kinda of like what was on this old one, so I'll probably transfer that over to this, if they're the same size. In addition to transferring over this sleeve, it looks like I'm also gonna to have to transfer over the mounting brackets that are on the old cable. We'll figure that out. Look at me. Ta-da! Ooh, fancy. Interesting. This, the way they've got this set up is the adjustment is, it is where it is, period. I don't like that. It's not fluid like it is with this old one. Get the right size socket, Eric. Okay, so that's not the right size socket. Then why do I have it then? Learn how to use the screwdriver, Eric. Just put it in the, just put it in the slot and spin it and hang on to it. Yeah, that is not the same as this. And I imagine they didn't incorporate this because this is expensive to make. This is cheap. It's in the bin. Oh yeah. I know it's brand new and all, but future adjustments may need to be made. If this comes loose, parking brake no work no more. Because I lowered the rear suspension on my truck, things are likely going to look a little bit different on my truck than they will on your truck if your suspension is not lowered in the same way. I'll put links in the description to those videos where I lowered this so you can see what the stock configuration was. I don't like that. Therefore, before I commit, I'm gonna put a slight bend to this. I'm gonna take my lady slipper, put it into this, and try to maneuver it so it's just a bit lower. It does feel better. I don't love it. I don't hate it either.
If memory serves, the instructions stated that they wanted this to go in the middle hole, not in this one. I'm the one that chose to put it here. Uh, therefore, I'm going to move it up there because what that does is it moves this forward enough and I'm, I'm really at the end of my adjustment on the cable, so I, I need a little bit more and it looks like that's where I'm going to get it by moving the bracket on both sides forward one notch. You know, without these shorter bolts, this was never going to happen. What I'm noticing with it in this position is that the cable is just laying over the top of this caliper and as it actuates, it's just going to rub over the top of it. So I've got to change this position of this mount up so that the angle comes down so that it doesn't interfere with this so much. If I hit my head on this exhaust one more time, I'm just going to get the hacksaw and make it happen. It's better, but it still sucks. I'm going to wait to move this one. And the reason for that is, is everything seems to be hooked up now. And I like the angle here. So I might lose that angle, but I'm going to put the wheels on, put it in neutral, see if I can spin the wheels. And if they're spinning with drag, then I know I've got to move this to give myself a little bit more slack. If they're not spinning with drag, I'm going to activate the parking brake and see if it actually holds. If it does, we'll call that a win. But before I do that, I'm going to go in and uh, move the brackets from the old cable over to the new one. Here's one of those brackets. This guy is right here. In this video, you got the added bonus of me showing you how to replace the right side parking brake cable on one of these trucks. However, if you are installing this rear disc brake kit, know that you'll need to save your parking brake cables and that it's very likely you're going to have to run your adjuster all the way out. As you can see, even mine with a brand new cable is not engaging all the threads in there. I know it's not going anywhere. I'm not worried about it, but uh, you will have to run your adjuster all the way out. So know that you're going to have to do that in some way, shape, or form if you're installing this uh, rear disc brake kit and plan to use the parking brake. In addition to cranking the adjuster all the way out, if you are installing this kit, instead of installing the brackets as I have here all the way on this last hole, you might move it to this middle one. Uh, that will move this in closer and give you more slack on the end in case you need it. I'm only going to put these on with a couple of lug nuts because I'm just testing the parking brake operation. If it works out, what I might do is the final installation of the rear wheels because we'll be done back here. It's hard to say that, but we should be done back here. I wonder if I could recondition that. Feels tight. Goes forward fine. Like. All right, let's release it and see what happens. Well, it doesn't like going backwards no matter what, but forwards, there's no resistance at all. And that's both sides. Feels like a parking brake to me. It's cheesy as, well, it's sketchy as sketch can be, but seems to be a parking brake. I'm calling it done. Walking away. Taking my ball, going home. I also made one other adjustment is I moved this, uh, instead of coming up front like this, I moved it up like this. It creates a lot less tension, doesn't bind it up against the fuel tank. I just like how it sits a lot better. All right, where this cable passes through, I'm just gonna take a little bit of axle grease and put it on that cable. Hopefully that'll help prolong its life a little bit. Picked up some more brake fluid. We're uh, a little low according to this. I kind of like having that extra capacity. So wow, from min to max is a whole thing of brake fluid. 
Rear disc brake conversion kit from SSBC. Is it worth it on the GMT 400? Um, I am on the fence on that for a number of reasons. I don't really like the parking brake setup, although it does appear to work. Uh, how it holds up over time, eh. You might look at that parts list that I showed earlier with those rear calipers and consider doing a conversion that way. Really the only thing that you're lacking at that point is the brackets and everything to hook everything up. Or another alternative is you could spend the money that you would spend on this kit possibly find a rear end that already has rear disc brakes, or you just stick with the drum brakes. I know that there's haters out there about drum brakes, but they work just fine. I could have reconditioned those, perhaps just done the ABS delete and been fine and had a much better brake pedal feel. It's hard to say. It does stop the truck fine. So I'm not saying that the pedal doesn't feel better. It, doesn't, it no longer sinks to the floor, but what I can attribute that to, that's really difficult to nail down. I'll put links in the description to the parts and everything I used. I hope the information in this video helps you should you uh, be deciding on whether or not you want to switch your GMT 400 over to rear disc brakes. I also have other videos on this. Don't forget to check those out as well. Links in the description for all kinds of stuff. Special thanks to Summit for helping me out with these parts. Uh, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you visit ericthecarguy.com, also linked down in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to all those things that help me make a living. I appreciate it. Be safe. Have fun. Fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.